Look at this thing, it's called the Delta Wing, and it's like no other race car you've ever seen. So I got looking into what the deal with it is, and it's actually genius, but it did fail epically. So let me explain. Everything about this car is weird. Front tires narrower than the ones on your road car, no wings, and one of the strangest shapes you've seen on a racetrack. The main idea for this thing was to make a car to go as fast as an Indy car, but with half the power, half the drag, half the weight, and half the fuel consumption. Bold ambitions. And it got bolder. They were aiming to race this against Indy cars, but also against the incredibly fast LMP1 cars at the time. And so the designers thought outside the box and chose a delta wing shape. It's actually nabbed from the Concorde, and it's surprisingly simple. Let me explain. Jet planes like the Eurofighter Typhoon and the Concorde use a delta wing, essentially the triangular wing that is similar in shape to the Greek letter delta. Normal plane wing, delta wing, right, got that. The idea is that you have a much deeper wing surface and therefore can have a far thinner leading edge, meaning that you can have good lift without loads of drag. The triangle shape also makes sense structurally. You can make the delta wing very stiff without adding lots of weight. The mechanics of this thing matters, as with any race car. So if you're into motorsport, you should check out Brilliant, this week's sponsor. They have an excellent course on classical mechanics. And we always go on about this one, but it's because it covers everything you need to know to understand race cars. Their website and app is the best place to interactively learn about science, technology, engineering, and maths. They have thousands of visual lessons that enable you to learn by doing, from foundational and advanced maths to AI data science, real engineering, and more, with new lessons added monthly. There's always a practical application to their courses that really puts your knowledge to the test. And it's that extra layer of learning that traditional methods just don't do, but Brilliant does. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash driver61 or click on the link in the description. First 200 of you to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription and you'll want to take advantage of that. Back to the car, the key here was to minimize drag. On a racetrack, power to weight is the main factor in how a car gets out of a corner. But on the straights, it's power versus drag. So Nissan went for the delta wing approach to reduce drag. The narrow front end means that the drag coefficient is much lower than any other car it would race against. And that meant that this car ran with only 300 horsepower, which was low compared to the LMP1 cars it would race against, with 550 horsepower engines and 300 horsepower of hybrid power to deploy out of the corners. Keep drag down, they also used underfloor downforce to get rid of draggy wings and it even binned off wing mirrors using a camera and screen setup instead. So that was the idea with the shape, to match the LMP1 cars on the straights with less than half of the power. But it was also the shape that caused them loads of other headaches. Firstly, how on earth do those front wheels work? How do you turn a car with wheels that are just so close together and with tires that narrow? And honestly, it looks like it should do this. Well, surprisingly, the physics add up. The designer for this car was a guy called Ben Bowlby, someone with a great reputation for designing anything from British touring cars, Indy cars, NASCARs, and later the Nissan front wheel drive LMP1 car. And he was keen to make sure this car was dynamically balanced. So the idea was that 70% of the weight was over the rear axle, which you might have guessed by just, well, looking at it. Then the underfloor downforce acted through the same point, with 70% of the car's downforce acting through the rear axle. And then on top of that, the tires at the rear are in balance with this, with the car producing 70% of its mechanical grip, so the tire grip, through the rear tires, all in balance, and Bowlby loved that idea. That's why the front tires could get away with being so skinny. The development team actually had to get Michelin in to design a custom tire, as obviously nobody made anything like this. So back to the question, how on earth does it steer? Well, they actually didn't need very much front tire because of the fact that they are very close together. Get this, in a normal rectangular platform racing car, when you go through a corner, the majority of the load transfers to the outside. So through Cobb's corner at Silverstone, the majority of the car's weight is leaning on the outside tires, meaning the inside tires are comparatively unloaded. This means that one front tire is having to do the majority of the turning. Whereas the Delta Wing has two tires in the middle, and even even in the most heavily loaded corner, the loads across the tires are pretty even, meaning that it's able to make the most of the tires that it actually has. Then add in Ben Bulba's favorite thing, 
balance forces and the thing is supposed to work really well. The idea being that the front axle is a long way from the rear. So although the turning force may be less, the front has more leverage over the rear. So in theory, this worked. But we spoke to one of the drivers of this thing to see if that was actually the case. But we'll bring him in in a little while. Although the front of the car is the really striking part, it's the rear that has a lot to do. It has the 300 horsepower turbo four-cylinder engine from a Nissan Duke with a very light five-speed gearbox chosen over the traditional six-speed because of its weight. There is a bizarre story to the engine here, but I'll get back to that. The shape of the car gave it the low drag slipstream shape that allowed the car to match the LMP2s down the straight. But the key to keeping up with the cars out of the corner was to get the weight right down. And the designers did do that. Where the Audi LMP1 car at the time was weighing in at 910 kilograms, the Nissan weighed just 500. But there was the fact that the LMP1s had four wheel drive when using their hybrid out of the corners. So the Nissan used a very clever mechanical torque vectoring system. The idea is that you're trying to apply exactly the right power for the grip of the tire, minimizing wheel spin. And again, this system was incredibly complex and ahead of its time. Rather than a typical torque vectoring system that essentially breaks wheels when the engine is applying too much power, the diff had a clever planetary gear system that varied power across the two tires. Remember me mentioning the engine? Well, the project wasn't Nissan's idea. They joined later with sponsorship and the agreement that they would provide the engine, enabling them to use it as a marketing exercise for their line of more efficient combustion engines. And in the marketing material, they said, The engine in the Delta Wing is a Nissan 1.6 DIGT turbo. Very similar in structure to the engines that we've got in our Duke product. But supposedly, the only part of the engine that was shared with the Duke was the throttle body. The rest was apparently entirely made to order for this car, with very different specifications to the Duke. Many people speculated that it was actually a Chevy engine out of their world touring car. But it seems that the engine was actually entirely built by RML. Anyway, that can be sometimes how these things go in marketing around motorsport. Back to the design. You see how clever this thing is, and in testing, it seemed to be performing incredibly. However, at the time, they had one big issue. Exactly where do you race a car like this? Initially, they made the bold call to pitch the car to IndyCar. Yet, there could have been a full grid of these racing around the road and oval courses in the US. However, unsurprisingly, IndyCar stuck with the Dallara chassis they had been used to. Seems they like their rectangular cars. Then they targeted Le Mans and sports car racing. Initially coming out with a closed cockpit design, but later pivoting to an open top so they could use the carbon tub from the abandoned Aston Martin AMR1 LMP1 project. And it sounds like they literally had spare tubs lying around at the old Aston HQ. So the Delta Wind project bought them and saved themselves tens of thousands in crash testing. Even then, Le Mans wouldn't let them join the LMP1 or LMP2 class, only offering them the Garage 56 spot, the spot held for experimental vehicles. And so it was only competing against itself. Whilst they got the spot, there were loads of bizarre restrictions in place for the team, such as they had to run wing mirrors, despite not needing them, which according to the team added 8% more drag. They were also given a lap time that they were not allowed to beat, although they were able to run at LMP2 pace with half the power. And so Nissan decided to crack on anyway. They were plagued with issues. The torque vectoring system didn't work, so they ran the race with essentially an open diff, meaning they were really slow in traction zones. Then there was the cornering ability. Despite everything Nissan said about the car being more efficient through the corners, Delta Wing was only the 29th fastest car through the Porsche curves, meaning it was slower than the LMP1 and LMP2 fields through the faster corners. And it was 45th fastest through the Ford chicanes, the tight chicanes at the end of the lap. And it seems this was down to the car not dealing with the curbs very well. Then, six hours into the race, under safety car conditions, the LMP1 Toyota of Nakajima took out the Delta Wing whilst trying to warm its tyres. And it seems like the Toyota just didn't see the Delta Wing in its mirrors. And really, you can't blame him. The car is tiny and was painted entirely black. Even after being put in the wall, the driver did his absolute best to get the car back. When it wouldn't drive, he tried to fix the car using the tools the team were passing him through the fence. But unfortunately, the car was too far gone. Despite this failure at Le Mans, Nissan decided to keep trying, developing the car to go endurance racing in the US. And one of the test and development drivers was my mate Lucas. Interestingly, Lucas didn't drive at Le Mans because he was driving an LMP2 car with someone you might know. 
Martin Brundle and his son Alex. Anyway, I gave Lucas a call to see what this thing was like to drive. Well, my name is Lucas Ordone, the former racing driver for Nissan, and yeah, I had the chance to to develop and, and drive for uh, Delta Wing project back in 2012, and yeah, it was a crazy project. My first impression was uh, the low drag uh, that had this car. Uh, it was uh, really, really fast on the high speed corners, but uh, really challenging and uh, uh, at the slow corners. That's where we had the really, really issues, you no know, on traction and, and stability. So a little touch to the wheel, the car was really dived to the corner. Uh, it was very, very, quite snappy. Now, I really wasn't expecting Lucas to say that. You would have thought that those front tires compared to the rears would mean that the car just understeered. Looking at the car, I thought it'd be really difficult to get it into the corner. But Lucas said the absolute opposite. The car was snappy, so it almost had too much front grip. I suppose that's why I'm not a car designer. This aero package we had uh, underneath uh, the chassis and uh, and it really worked well in the high speed corners. It was uh, very different to, to what I was uh, used to, uh, to a GT car or to a, a normal standard LMP2 car. But uh, but yeah, uh, once you you get used to it, uh, it was it was pretty fast and pretty fun to drive when I raced in in Petit Le Mans. Uh, but then in the slow corners, where, that's where we had the the the, the biggest difference and the biggest lack of, of of performance. The rear inside wheel uh, was uh, spinning, and and and, and the, uh, the 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 issue we had was with this torque vectoring and and with this. Uh, traction on exit of the mid exit of the corner where 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 you you know where you try to to put the the throttle in um the inside wheel was spinning and 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 then the traction control was coming to too hot and too harsh and that brings us to the petit le mans the 10 hour endurance race at road atlanta which is a great circuit and this time lucas drove in the race and he said there was one really tough thing to get used to when you need to to go over the the curves that's where the car struggle most no because when you see the car you put uh, the rear wheels on the curb but the front wheels are on on track you know so uh, that's another thing you you have to get used to it and and that was upsetting the car a lot because uh, you had what the rear wheels uh, touching the curb over the curb and bumping but the, the front wheels were on, on the on the ground so you you know the car tried to you know to lose the the momentum and to lose the the stability and then and then that upset the aerodynamic of the the car but despite this they really got the car working at road atlanta we did really great in in petit le mans uh, with this uh, fifth position and after that massive crash we had in, in the test uh, with Gunnar driving, uh, crashing uh, with a Porsche that made a, a big mistake to us. But uh, but yeah, we had a really a cl clean race. And the Delta Wing was quick. They really got the car working well, but they were hurt by something else. The owner of the team at the time, Don Panos, owned the track at Road Atlanta and the American Le Mans series that ran the Petit Le Mans race. So a slight conflict of interest. And really, he tried to show that he wasn't favoring the Delta Wing against the existing competitors. It seems like he overcompensated. Despite qualifying well, the Delta Wing had to start from the pits. P40. Then, in the many safety cars, they were left at the back of the field, rather than being brought to the front with all the other prototype cars. So, they were nerfed really, but despite this, they finished fifth. However, despite those handicaps, they could have likely fought for the win. The car was fast, predictable, and used half the fuel of the V8-powered LMP2 cars in that race. But then, it got a bit messy. Don Panos decided to cancel the sponsorship with Nissan and take the development in-house, putting a Mazda engine in the car. But Nissan weren't done, so they hired back Ben Bowlby, and they decided to turn to hybrid power to get the car competitive for Le Mans in 2014, where they actually set a solid lap time on electric power alone. Very soon after, Delta Wing launched a lawsuit against Nissan, saying they stole the Delta Wing IP by hiring Bowlby. So there were versions of the Delta Wing from both Nissan and Delta Wing for a while. Really, none of them did any better than the original version. And in 2016, both projects were canned. You have to agree with me, the idea of this is really cool and the mechanics of it did work but it seems that the racing world didn't like it and it needed way more development and time and money than anyone could give it which is a shame you should check out this video on why f1 wouldn't win at le mans despite having faster cars thanks for watching go and follow lucas on instagram and i'll catch you in the next one